Welcome to Save the Cat version 3. In this series of demos, I'm going to be going over a lot of the new features of Save the Cat version 3 and showing you how to use them. Now, I'm using the Windows version for the demos, but the Mac version works exactly the same. It just looks a little different because it's on a Mac. All right, let's get started. I've already installed the program and activated it using my serial number, and I have it running now. Now, of course, it doesn't look like much because I don't have a file open, but before I open a file, I want to show you the file menu, which, just for fun, is a little different than what you might expect. You can see we've got some different uh, menu items than the usual program. Start fresh. Open a new file. Pick a file, any file. Open an existing file. Pick up where I left off is a list of your recently opened files. And then, of course, is Retrieve from the Cloud, which is the Save the Cat Cloud, where you can upload the file and then download it to other computers and other devices. And then you've got Retrieve from Save the Cat iPhone version 1Q, which is just to maintain compatibility with the current version of Save the Cat for the iPhone. And there's the Import menu, Importing from Final Draft 8, and Save the Cat versions 1 or 2. And then, of course, Shutter Down is your exit menu. Now, if you've got a file open, there will also be another menu item called Give This One a Rest, and that means close the file. This is the new user interface. If you've got version 1 or 2 of Save the Cat, you can tell that this is quite a bit different. We've actually put everything into one window but we've made this window really flexible as to how you can configure it to set it up just the way you want it. The first way you can configure it is by resizing each of the different sections. For example, I can resize the title and logline section just by dragging the splitter down, making that section bigger. Let me put that back up. I can also adjust the size of the beats section, or I can adjust the size of the notes section down here. You're probably wondering, the notes section, what is that? Well, this is a special corkboard that allows you to drag and drop files of all different kinds, photos, PDFs, sound files, video clips, anything that might be related to your story and serve as a reference. You can later link those in to different your characters, to scene cards, and so on, but we'll come back to that later. If you've read Save the Cat Strikes Back, you'll recognize the green light checklist. This is a checklist of items to make sure you complete before you're ready to pitch your story. We'll come back to that later. Now, if you remember from previous versions, we had a litter box, but it was a pop-up box. In this case, it's built right into this window. I'll show you in a minute how to access it. In addition to resizing sections like I just did, you can also hide and show sections with the click of a button. These little buttons right across here are the Hide Show buttons. This first one allows me to hide the title and logline section. I click it again to show the title and logline section. The next button allows me to hide the Beats section, making more room for the board, or I can show it and bring it back. The next section allows me to hide or show the litter box. Now the litter box isn't showing at the moment, so we'll show the litter box. And let's hide it again, Put it, get it out of the way. And I can hide the notes section. And click it again and show the notes section. Now, if you want to instantly make the entire window one section all by itself, we have the next series of buttons. These are called the Full View buttons. The first button will turn the entire window into the Title and Logline section. So now you've got everything out of the way, you're ready to focus and really concentrate on your Title and Logline. Now to return to the previous view, I just click the Restore button, and it puts everything back the way it was. Then there's the Full Beats view. This maybe makes it a little easier to read, gives you a little more typing room, and allows you to focus on the beats. We'll restore that. Next is the full board view, making the entire window the board. Now you can notice that the board is much bigger than what actually shows, so I just scroll across and up and down to see the entire board. 
Now if you've got a large monitor, this is great because you can maximize the window and take full advantage of your monitor size and really spread the board out. And then you can also resize the board itself and make it bigger. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. I'll restore the view. And then we also have the full notes view, which brings up our notes cork board. And again, you can see that it's much larger than what fits in the window. And this one you can resize as well. We'll come back to that in a little bit. I'm going to restore the view again. So there you have the basic way you can resize sections, you can hide sections to make room for other sections, you can go into full view of any of those various sections as well to take away distractions, really focus on your work, take advantage of your monitor size and so on. Now if your eyes are a little strained with smaller fonts, we've also provided a means to increase the font size for most of the items that you see. If I go to the edit menu, and click preferences for this project I have the main font size and we've got one of four different sizes normal larger than normal even bigger as big as it gets you can pick any one of those sizes and it will instantly resize the fonts in most every section as you can see Now the boards a little different the cards are done separately because maybe you want the cards a little smaller to lay them out side by side and avoid overlap or maybe you want them bigger so you can see them a little better We go to the view menu, then the board menu, then the zoom, and we can zoom it again, normal, large than normal, even bigger, and as big as it gets. And I'll go to even bigger for now. And as you can see, it increases the individual card sizes as well as the uh, beat dividers on the board, making it a little easier to read. I'm going to reset those to the normal view, and they're instantly reset. I'm going to go back and reset the font as well. There we go. All set. Because you can scroll the board, it's not limited to the size of your monitor or the window. You can make it as large as you like. The way you do that is under the Edit menu, Preferences for this project, Size of the board. First you could fit it to the current view. Let's say you've made the board really large, then you've gone to full board view on a large monitor, and yet the board is still larger than even fits on the monitor. You can use fit to current view. It'll resize the board to fit within the window. That way you can see everything all in one shot. Now you don't want to do that on a laptop because it'll just kind of squish all the cards together and make it really hard to work with. Otherwise, you can increase the width by 10%, decrease the width by 10%, increase the height by 10%, or decrease the height by 10%. Restoring the defaults just comes up with a number like 1024 by 768 or something like that and resizes the board to that size. But if I click on increase width by 10%, it starts to spread the cards out as it increases the width of the board, making it uh, easy to fit more cards in side by side. Now you can also increase the size of the notes board since it scrolls around in the background as well. Edit menu, Preferences for this project, size of the notes board. And in this case, you can increase the width and height or decrease the width and height. And it just kind of moves everything and spreads it out to fill the available area. There you have the new user interface for Save the Cat version 3. Gives you all the flexibility you need to set it up just the way you like it so that you can be as productive and as creative as possible as you work on that next great screenplay.